Welcome. So we are going to talk about the Gravitron today. So the Gravitron is a ride you can see at Six Flags, county fairs, things like that. It consists of a large cylinder, kind of a drum you might say, and it's got a whole bunch of mats or other things to make sure that you feel nice and comfortable. And it's going to spin a whole bunch when it does this. So we'll indicate the spinning by an omega. And we've got individuals riding the Gravitron. And what we want from this Gravitron is, is that there is right at this little gap. They're not actually touching the ground. They're spinning so fast that they don't touch the ground. They're only touching the mats. And so, so we want to know, right, we're going to say that the mu is 0 0.5. We're going to say the radius is 4 meters. And we want to know. how fast it needs to spin. So what we can start out is we can start out by doing our sketch. And our sketch organizes and solve. It's going to be really, really nice to have both what we could call a circle view and what we could call a side view. In our circle view, we're going to, of course, right, show the circle. So in this case, it's going to be top down, but in a lot of other cases, it could be not top down. And we can kind of show our riders heads as they go along. We can show this and we can even show the distance of four meters in this way. Our side view is going to take a look kind of similar to this of the side of it. And we're still going to have our writer and the mats. And we can still show the four meters. Why we do both of these is we want to write do two very easy, very simplistic drawings. And write one view might have more information than another view. If we're not sure which view, right, it's very easy just to do two ones instead. So once we have our sketches, our circle view, our side view, we can then go into our interaction diagram. In our interaction diagram, we're listing the objects of interest. So our writer is our object of interest. And in fact, it's so much the object of interest that we are going to draw a box around it, indicating that it is part of this system. We're back to write just single object systems. We don't have to deal with multiple object systems like we did last week, which is really, really nice. Then we have to figure out what the writer is in contact with. He's only in contact with the mat. And then he also is being interacted with by the earth. So those are our objects in our interaction diagram. And then we can draw our forces. So between the mat and the writer, we need a normal force between the mat and the writer. We're indicated that there's a friction, so we're going to talk about friction force. And between the Earth and the rider, there's a force of gravity. So we've got a lot of inter uh, sketches so far, but we've got one last sketch, and that's our free body diagram. In our free body diagram, right, our object is now just represented by a dot. It's free in space. And we think about which directions of the forces that we have. So we've got force of gravity pointing down, as it usually does. But in this direction, in this view, right, the side view is being best for it, the normal force is perpendicular to the surface. So our normal force actually goes out in this direction. And if you think about it, it's the friction that's keeping you pinned to here. If you had a frictionless, a greased, or an icy surface or something like that, you would fall down very easily. Or if you had a rough surface, it would be tough to uh, have you fall down. So then our forces are in this way, this free body diagram. We can help ourselves out a little bit by giving ourselves a coordinate system. So this is the R direction. This is the Z direction. So that's our sketch step. Our next step is our organized step. In our organized step, we have our acceleration is equal to the sum of all of our forces. So we have the normal force, the force of friction, and the force of gravity, all divided by the mass. 
And then once we have that, we want to decompose it into three directions. That's the new thing for this week, is that we have three directions to decompose in, but we're always decomposing in the same three directions, radial, tangential, and the z direction. So in the radial direction, we have just the normal force. In the tangential direction, we have no forces. And in the z direction, we have the friction force minus mass times gravity. Once we have then these decompositions, we can say what we know our accelerations are. So our acceleration in the radial, we can write as either r omega squared, or we could write as v squared over r. We're not going to use this one, but instead the r omega squared. Our at is going to be zero, and our az is also going to be zero. So very quickly from this, we can start our solve step. So in our solve step, we can take a look at our r direction. In our r direction, we got n over m equals r omega squared. So we can say that our n is equal to m r omega squared. In our z direction, we see that right, our force of friction, which is mu times n minus mg, is equal to zero. So what we want to do is we want to substitute in n equals mr omega squared. And so in our z direction, we have mu times m r omega squared is equal to mg. We're trying to define how fast it needs to spin. So we're trying to eliminate just omega squared on its own. So we can divide both sides by mu mr mu mr. And of course, on this side, we should get a lot of cancellation, the r's and the r's, the m's and the m's, the mu's and the mu's. And we get a little bit of cancellation over on this side, the m's and the m's. This is really nice. This means that right, the, the mass of our rider doesn't indicate how fast we have to spin in it. Whatever our rider's mass is, any spin that we do will work. So we get from this now that our omega squared is g over mu r, or that our omega our g is 9.8 meters per second squared, our mu is 0 0.15, and our r is 4 meters. So doing a little bit of math, we get that our omega is 2.21 radians per second. This is roughly equivalent to, oops, 21, not 12. 21 revolutions per minute. So roughly every three seconds, you're completing a revolution, and then you complete 20 or so revolutions in one minute. So that's how we do problems in circular motion. We're doing the same steps of sketch, organize, and solve. Just now we are decomposing into two different directions, and we have two different views.